Welcome back. So when we last left off, this guy was up on the machine and just uh, you know quickly creating a, a little mold for that out of MDF. And as you can see here, um, it's actually off and, and uh, didn't actually need any sanding or anything like that. Just got waxed and Jeff put some uh, extra um, material on there, which is in that sort of bottle there on the left uh, to help it sort of release more. Now you can see he's uh, putting down the resin there um, in preparation for laying the carbon fiber on that one so this gets um, a couple of layers of carbon fiber and then it gets um, a couple of pieces of FR4 in those uh, square sections there to add as, um, as structural uh, integrity or strength and then a couple more layers of carbon fiber on there and here you can see he's laying in the carbon fiber there or at least the first layer of that and wetting that down so it didn't take long to create those little you know quick molds there it was really only a little bit of time on the machine and it was pretty much it and so instead of doing the regular vacuum bagging thing he just basically put everything here in a garbage bag and just um, put some tacky tape along the top edge there to seal it up and um, put the hose through the middle there and you've created an instant uh, vacuum bag which actually sealed really well so that's uh, left a cure now and uh, we'll see how that comes out and here's the finished product and Jeff is uh, just trimming it off there, just trimming the flanges off. And as you can see, it came out nicely. So and those little imperfections there are just no big deal. Uh, just where it wasn't sort of pushed in enough um, when it was getting done. But anyway, it's going to work fine for us. And you may remember this guy, this is the um, wing fixture that we're going to use to hold the wing skin in place while all the ribs get done and so the machine when it's up on the machine I'll be um, milling, milling those particular edges there to um, create the shape of it but the guys have been uh, welding up the frame here so here you can see they're just laying out the steel here um, just got it up on a table so it's nice and level checking their measurements there and now you can see it's all been tacked into place there and actually since that it's already been welded up and here you can see it is all welded up and so these black um, pieces here that's fiberglass and it's a sort of special product that we bought it's a board that's one inch thick and it's fairly easy to mill and it's just they're just resting in place right now but they will be bolted to those sort of cross braces there and then I'll be putting that up on the machine and running the machine along those edges to create the curvature that you saw in the CAD just before and next up most of the stuff is done for the main gear but there's a couple of brackets here that still need to be done so these ones here and these basically hold the um, hydraulics um, cylinders in place and also the um, pneumatic struts that push the gear down um, in the case of when you're actually letting it down so anyway those are just going to be created out of FR4 and then sort of wrapped in some carbon and so uh, the next job uh, for Jeff was to cut those out and so he just had a template cut them out of just a thin bit of FR4 I think it's only 8 inch FR4 there and you can see that's just sort of mocked into place there and they need to be uh, glued together or bonded together so here you can see he's just got some uh, high sole and uh, just bonded those together now and so they'll just get um, wrapped with some carbon fiber to reinforce them and uh, they'll be ready to bond into place and then uh, we'll be able to hook up the cylinders to them so next up was moving on to the various parts of the nose gear so all these different um, sort of dark gray pieces here all have to be cut and uh, they're all out of 4130 steel so I already ordered all the different materials some flat stock and tube stock and that sort of stuff and so it was time to uh, cut all that this week and so the first step was uh, to do these ones that I've been highlighting there and so here's some of those parts and those are just cut out of uh, 65 thou thick um, 4130 and then this one here this is the um, arm that actuates the gear there that's uh, half, oh, sorry, quarter inch um, 4130 there and then moving on, these are the brackets here that hold the retraction mechanism um, onto the sort of front brackets that you saw last week. And so again, a bunch of different pieces there that need to be cut and holes drilled and all that good stuff. So what I did was I printed out the uh, templates there on paper and then just glued them to the steel. And these ones have already been cut, obviously. The holes still need to be drilled and the corners still need to be rounded. But basically that's kind of the, the process, just glue them down and then uh, cut them out and you know trim the corners and so on and uh, so this is the next thing here this is these um, brackets there that you saw that Jeff did before now there's aluminum blocks there that hold the bearings 
and those came back from preferred uh, during the week and so we have to create now backing plates there where I've just highlighted that one and those are just out of um, 60 thou aluminum so how I did that was basically just tracing around those just quick as measuring them I guess and uh, just marked it on both sides um, of the aluminum here and this, this is 61 six, or sorry 60 61 aluminum and so I did, marked it on both sides and then uh, with the bandsaw and this is sped up I'm not this fast normally um, cutting one side there and then I flip it over and cut the other side because you know with the main uh, support there on the left side of the bandsaw this uh, material is too wide to be able to actually cut it um, using that same side so you see I have to flip that which makes it easy enough to do it's good when you um, ha can actually mark things on both sides which it was easy enough to do with these ones anyway so I got those uh, two cut out and there's a couple more they have to cut out next week on that so the next step was to drill the holes in that and it's, you know you think easy enough just to basically use that block to, to drill them but the drill bit's going to walk if you do that and then the, the holes are never going to line up so the trick was here is to basically use this hole punch um, Jeff discovered that it was just the right diameter quarter inch there would fit through there so put the hole punch in there mark a hole um, put it up onto um, the bench drill there and um, just basically drill the hole out there and then do the you know reposition it and um, punch the next hole and and drill that one so as you can see and I'm just drilling it down there I'm using this um, tapered drill bit here which is really handy those things really cut nicely and you don't have to worry about um, them getting blunt so much this thing we've been using this one for ages and it's still sharp as which is amazing I'm not sure how why but anyway I flip it over there and just run it again and that just takes the burr off the other side so it's nice and smooth so I got um, those two plates done and um, all the four holes lined up perfectly so happy how that came out so the next thing to do uh, now that I've done those is that uh, we have to put um, nut plates on the back of that that are you know obviously threaded in order to have something for the bolts to uh, grab onto that are going through that so here I'm just basically um, using a little kind of bolt there to hold the nut place into place so see I just did one move into the next one and uh, so just tighten it up just by hand and get that nut plate sort of lined up on the diagonal like that and then I can use the Dremel there with a small bit and just drill the hole through the nut plate there as you can see here so that's actually that was the easiest way to do it because that bolt is underneath there I couldn't really put it up um, on the other uh, you know table thing to drill it and getting the big drill out was a bit much so this actually worked really well it didn't take long so the Dremels actually comes in handy even for just drilling regular holes like that so I had to do um, all eight of those so 16 holes didn't take that long to do that and um, we're waiting for uh, the rivets to come back now so I can put those because we didn't have the right ones yet had to order them from aircraft spruce and you can see I also countersunk those holes um, because the rivets need to be sort of inset there anyway uh, here's some other parts that came back from uh, one of the other CNC shops is doing stuff for us um, which is corrugated replacement parts and uh, so they've done some of the parts there for uh, the remaining parts for the belt drive system so those are all back and um, you'll see those later when we start assembling it and they also did this adapter plate for us for the LPEX and this is the plate that goes between the um, the flywheel on the engine and the LPEX adapter itself so there you can see kind of sits in there and those two will bolt together and bolt it to the flywheel and then the other piece will be in there and lastly uh, so this is the um, gauge cluster here that I had and so I decided to get some switches that are sort of combination switches and circuit breakers and these are kind of just marine grade ones that you would put in a boat normally you see they sort of you know switch on and off but they'll also pop out um, if they break a circuit so I'll be using those just for the basic stuff like the fuel pump and the gauges and, and basic electric stuff just again just for the engine stand anyway you'll see more of that uh, next week and that's our update for this week and then uh, next week probably the next update will be on Wednesday because of the public holiday on uh, Monday. So I hope you all have a good weekend.